Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about Hanukkah and what it is that we are supposed to do on Hanukkah. Now, as you know, over here at Harmus Academy, we are the repairers of the breach, restoring the paths to dwell in, and we understand that the paths back to our Father goes through the feast days. Well, this is a feast day many have never heard of, talking about Hanukkah. In this class, we're going to talk about what it is that we are supposed to do on Hanukkah, even though many of us have never heard of it. Now, the reason why we haven't heard of this feast day, it is a very important day, but we haven't heard of it because it's really only found in the apocryphal books, the books that the Catholic Church decided not to include in the Canaan, talking about the books of Maccabees. Well, in this class, we're going to look down through those scripture and we're going to see how it is that we're supposed to celebrate this day. And we're also going to go over and we're going to look in the book of John. Yep. The gospel according to John and how the Messiah celebrated this day, what he did during this day. This is the feast of dedication that you hear about in John and chapter 10. So we'll be talking about that. But now we will not be talking about the candle lighting ceremonies that you often hear about when you hear about Hanukkah. Um, primarily because those are not found in the um, Holy Scripture anywhere. That ceremony actually is talked about in the Talmud. And I am completely unfamiliar with the Talmud, so I haven't found any scripture um, on that eight-day candle lighting deal with the oil and all of that, so we won't be talking about that. And we won't be going into too much detail as far as the timing of the uh, feast days. Um, you know how we do over on our channel. We usually go in and prove those dates by way of the um, sacred calendar and such, but we won't be going into that detail either. We will address those um, um, particular dates and we'll address some other things um, and some other classes. What I plan to do is to um, handle this kind of like an a ant would eat an elephant and bite off small chunks of it at a time and so that's what I plan to do is to discuss in this video um, what it is that we're supposed to do and in other videos we'll discuss why when how um, and and so forth like we do every holiday season the only difference between this one and the other feast days is we haven't gotten into much detail on Hanukkah we really didn't understand the significance of Hanukkah. Hanukkah is very, is a very important um, holiday as it turns out, very important holy day as it turns out. Um, one of the other things we'll discuss in future classes is the entire chapter of John and chapter 10. Um, so go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you can see when those classes out. In the meantime, you guys can go in and you can read John and chapter 10 um, because this is the Messiah on or about the days of Hanukkah when we drop down here to uh, verse what is it um, verse 22 where it says and it was at Jerusalem the feast of the dedication and it was winter this feast of the dedication is actually Hanukkah that's what Hanukkah is all about is the feast of the dedication now, is some really interesting stuff going on during this Feast of the Dedication as far as the Messiah is concerned because of like what you see there in verse 24, where he says uh, the Jews came round about him and said unto him, how long does thou make us to doubt if thou be the Christ? Tell us plainly. And this is exactly what the Messiah is going to do here in all of these red letters that you see here in um, in chapter 10. You see how right there in verse 30, he's saying that, well, he says, I am our father are one. This is one of the many, many verses that people use to say that um, the Messiah and Jesus, I mean, the Messiah and the father are the same being. It's just that Jesus was the Messiah made flesh, but they are the same. A um, lot of discussions over the Trinity. 
But you see that this was actually disclosed during the uh, Feast of Dedication there. You see, I'm talking about how his sheep will hear his voice and will know him. That all, this kind of, you know, takes me to that third testament of the Bible where, you know, a lot of people are debating the legitimacy or the inspiration behind the third testament of the Bible. Um, if you haven't heard about it, you can check many of our other videos. We give links to the third testament of the Bible. Um, and, but this is what the Messiah is talking about when he says, my sheep will hear my voice, um, meaning those who are of his flock can actually recognize the, uh, the father's voice in the third testament of the Bible. But, you know, like I said, we're going to go into detail on this chapter. There's a lot going on in this chapter. We'll probably do a, a class centered around this entire chapter. You see that in verse 34, how he says, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. Yeah, there's there's a lot to talk about in this chapter. Um, but in this class, we want to get more into what we are actually supposed to be doing on this day. So let's jump over and let's look at the book of Maccabees. Now, if you are unfamiliar with the book of Maccabees, this these are the books or some of the books that came um, in that uh, 400 years that they talk about between like the book of Ezra and the, the Gospels, 400 years between Christ. There was a lot going on um, during that time. You see it's part of the apocryphal books. Um, it was a lot going on through um, the books of Maccabees. Um, but like we talked about, you know, the Catholic Church decided to hide them. And I've told you plenty of times, you know, all you have to do is read those books that were hidden by the Catholic Church. And it makes it clear why they were hidden. Um, this whole Maccabean War um, is a slap in the face to the Catholic doctrine. And in these books, you read about how these individuals were putting their life on the line to not have to partake in the same abominations that are being totally embraced by the Catholic Church these days. Talking about uh, worshiping of other gods, eating forbidden foods, worshiping on the wrong day, for, um, forsaking the holy days, all kinds of stuff that, you know, today we, we take for granted. Today we don't even pay, we don't bat an eye at, you know, some of these abominations that go on. Back then, you know, these people were willing to die for, you know, to keep the Sabbath day um, and stuff like that. And, you know, that's a lot of reasons why I believe this book was removed is to show what a true zeal for the father looks like, you know to be willing to put your life on the line for the obedience of the word of God. Now, this is another subject that I will go in greater detail on in a future class. And that's why is there a such holiday or holy day as Hanukkah in the first place? You can read about that in the book of 1 Maccabees or 1 Maccabees in chapter 1. When you're hearing about this Antiochus Epiphanes who came in and put an abomination of desolation um on the altar or in the temple there back there in about uh, 170 AD, I believe, round about, give or take a decade or two. This is actually what you hear about in the book of Daniel when it's um, talking about how, you know, that individual will enter the town of Jerusalem by flatteries and then how he would, you know, do all of this devilish acts over there. This is actually Antiochus Epiphanes. Um, he's well known as the Antichrist. Um, people, you know, in today's doctrine, they kind of... Um, I think mistakenly use um, the teachings of Daniel to say that we're still waiting for this individual to come that was actually portrayed over there in the book of Daniel. And it very well could be. It's just that we definitely know that this Antiochus Epiphanes fit the description of when, what, what went on over there in the book of Daniel. Now, if we have somebody in the end times that comes and does a similar thing, it very well could be. But, um, we have to we have to realize, you know, before we pigeonhole ourselves and say we are definitely waiting for somebody to come and, you know, put an abomination of desolation, you know, on the temple before, you know, any of these other acts are to take place. Um, we have to be careful because, you know, we could actually miss something that could actually never happen is my point. 
you know, it's happened once. Um, there's no guarantee that it's going to happen again. It, it could, you know, but if we say that it is a definite that it is going to happen and all of these other events like the mark of the beast and, you know, all of these other events will only happen after we see this abomination of desolation, we could be making a huge error because they, it, it might not happen. You know, it, it might it, it might not be a foreshadow of things to come. Daniel might have only been talking about Antiochus Epiphanes when he was talking about these events. But I'll cover that in a, in a future class in, in greater detail. And this one, I really just want to point over to um, um, right here where you see in verse 59 of chapter one, it says now. The fifth and the twentieth day of the month, they did sacrifice upon the altar, which was upon the altar of God. Now, this is Antiochus Epiphanes, what you're reading here. This is the abomination of desolation uh, that Daniel was talking about. Um, it, if something could go down in the future similar to this, but this was the actual physical account here. What they did was they, this Antiochus Epiphanes built a whole nother altar on top of the altar that was in the temple in Jerusalem. And then he slaughtered a pig. He even put some people on this thing. Let's look at verse 60. He says, at which time, according to the commandment, they put to death certain women that had caused their children to be circumcised. And like I, I keep referring to this other class, and I don't want to go into too much detail here. But in that other class, when we go into detail why there is a Hanukkah in the first place, we'll talk about how it was a war against those who actually keep the law. Um, we've covered this in a, in a past class when we were talking about the war, but, you know, not to that much of a detail as we're going to do in, in the future class. Lord willing, you know, if he decides, you know, to allow us to do it and help us with it, we'll do it. But what we want to bring out in that class is how it was actually a war against those who keep the commandments. You see there in verse 61, and they hanged the infants about their necks and rifled their houses and slew them that had been circumcised. This, this, you know, this, this kind of stuff is actually going on now, guys. It's just that, you know, the servants of the Lord are so few that we don't really recognize that there is actually a war taking place against them at this time. But um, as we get prepared for Hanukkah, I would advise you to go over and read um, um, First Maccabees and chapter one so you can get a good understanding of what's actually taking place here and why. As these times approach, you should probably put us together a reading list, you know, of what to read. So, so far on our reading list, we have John and chapter 10. First Maccabees in chapter one, and we can definitely add uh, to the reading list um, First Maccabees in chapter four. Whereas over there in um, in First Maccabees in chapter one, we were hearing about how they made a um, a what they did the abomination of desolation on the Temple Mount on the twenty fifth day of the ninth month. Well, the thing about it. We see over here in chapter four that now that they have taken back the temple and they are dedicating the temple, they actually had this dedication ceremony on the very same day that the abomination of desolation was put in place. There's, there are a few years later, you know, this Maccabean war went on for I can't remember how many years. But what it was, was, you know, it was Antiochus Epiphanes who came in and captured Jerusalem and captured the Temple Mount. Um, <laughs> um, I'm sitting here thinking about all of the things that went on, you know, how, you know, some of the Jews actually uh, turned over their uh, freedoms, I'm, for lack of a better word. I can't think of a word to say there, but they actually turned themselves into Gentiles. They you know, act like they were Gentiles. They even went so far as to try to undo the circumcision. Think about that for a second. What circumcision is, you know, these guys had, they created, um, um, Antiochus Epiphanes created a gymnasium where, you know, these people were actually working out in the nude. So all of their private parts were seen. And everybody could see who they were, you know, if they were a uh, Jew or a Hebrew or, Hebrew or not, or if, if they were a Jew or not because of the uncircumcision. 
um, or the circumcision. Well, some of the ones who were circumcised went as far as to try to undo the act. <laughs> That's kind of funny when you think about how, how would they actually do that? Yeah, um, you can read about that in, in chapter one of the book of First Maccabees. And then over here, by the time you get to uh, chapter four, you can probably read all of the you know chapters leading up to chapter four, because you can read about the war and how they actually took back the temple. Because up here in chapter four, they've already recaptured the temple and now they are ready to rededicate the temple and that's what Hanukkah is all about it's after they have retaken the temple and they are now rededicating the temple and you know this goes a long way you know as far as where we're at today the our current temples or the current way we have been worshiping has been altered and changed ever since 312 AD ever since AD 312 when Constantine came in and you know set himself up as the head of the Christian church he created what we know today as the Catholic Church and has been well he's he started off by undoing the holy feast days days like tabernacles days like Passover he replaced those with um, pagan holidays like Easter and like Christmas and like Halloween and stuff um, this is similar to what Antiochus Epiphanes did. Constantine did the same thing. The only difference is that Constantine's reign would last for what Daniel told us, a uh, time, time and half a time. Well, when you do the math on that from 312 and calculating 490 years as a time or 70 weeks as a time, you end up in the year 2027. And so we can start actually starting to see some of this retaking of the 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 temple retaking of our spiritual Jerusalem you know could actually be starting to take place here um, during this time so this is really important when we start to think about the rededication of the temple because you know the temple is a spiritual temple inside the heart of humanity and you know that's what we're doing when we start to keep the feast days when we start to mind the Sabbath day when we start to you know create in ourselves this Maccabean war where we are you know refusing to take the mark of the beast and worship the beast and you know follow the ways of man um, this this Maccabean war is actually taking place inside of our hearts right now and you know as we win this war we could start to rededicate that temple and that's where we really want to be you know we we really want to be in a place where we've conquered the beast and we are now rededicating the temple there's a lot a lot of information going on here let me read verse 52 in chapter 4 it says now on the 5th and 20th day of the ninth month which is called the month Kaslu in the 148th year they rose up be times in the morning um, it's a lot of detail because the scripture is very accurate when it comes to its numbers and its prophecies and such and so they will be some correspondence with what was going on back here during the Maccabean period and what we have to look forward to going on here in the apocalyptic period that we're in now. All right, so let's jump down to uh, verse 59. It says, Moreover, Judas and his brethren with the whole congregation of Israel ordained that the day of dedication of the altar should be kept in their season from year to year by a space of eight days from the five and twentieth day of the month Kaslu with mirth and gladness. OK, now. I guess the highlight of this verse is the mirth and with gladness because it is telling us how it is that we are supposed to uh, honor this day on the uh, 25th day of Kaslu. You'd have to, you know, go in. You have to find out when Kaslu is. That's the ninth month. It's sometimes called Kislev, and it sometimes is called Machisvan. Or I mean, it, it has different names. You have to look it up to find out. You know. Um, what calendar has what name, but we just call it the ninth month. And on the 25th day of the ninth month is when this celebration uh, starts. And it's a celebration with mirth and with gladness. Mm, verse 60 says, at that same time, they builded up the Mount Zion 
with high walls and strong towers round about, lest the Gentiles should come and tread it down as they had done before. So now this will begin the beginning of these high walls. Now, these are not physical walls guys these are spiritual walls that needs to be built on our hearts to separate us from the um the the gentiles you know gentile a gentile is somebody who doesn't know the lord you know like you know anybody can become a jew or anybody can come become spiritual israel simply by keeping the laws you know nobody knows who bloodline israel is these days when you think about Solomon and how he, you know, had, you know, a thousand wives in his life, many of which were Gentiles. Well, you can imagine that royal seed, that seed of Israel would have been spread to a lot of Gentiles. And so it's been passed down to a lot of people. Now you can't look at, you know, who people are today and decide who is Israel and who is not. The only way you're going to be able to tell is if you run the DNA and determine, determine who has that uh, the God gene, as they call it, VMAT2, that is what they call the God gene. And, you know, it's a, it is it is um, hereditary that it passed down. And so a lot of Gentiles who we would call Gentiles by birth today, some of these people got blonde hair and blue eyes, you know, so we would, you know, label them as a Gentile. But when we look at the DNA, we can find some of these people have this genetic code which would have been passed down from Solomon, would have been passed down, you know, from any of the descendants of Israel who would have had a Gentile wife. It's just that easy. So all of that to say that you don't you can't look at a person and know who is Israel and who is not. I mean, you can you can look at Judah. You know, of course, you can look at Benjamin and see who they are, you know, today. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about all 12 tribes and these people will look like anybody. They can look like everybody. The, but the thing is, spiritual Israel, you can see who they are by looking and see if they actually keep the commandments or not. Let me let me jump over to Ezra and show you something right quick. I said Ezra, I meant Esther. I'm going to come over and show you in the book of Esther in chapter 8. You see there in verse 17, it says, And many of the people of the land became Jews, became Jews, you know, and, you know, you say, well, how do you become a Jew? How do you become Israel? Is by keeping the commandments. Um, the word Israel is a spiritual name. You know, it's not really talking about a bloodline of people, but the way you act, if you are keeping the commandments, if you, you know, if you are doing what the what the Bible says do, then you are uh, a Jew. You are Israel, you know. And, you know, so you see in um, chapter eight that these these individuals, because they were scared of the Jews, they actually became Jews. You know, they started keeping the Sabbath day. You know, they started, you know, worshiping the almighty. Um, and, you know, this is talking about the Feast of Purim. This is another one of those exilic feasts. This is these are feasts that happened after the days of Moses were in these. It, they were instituted, you know, long after Moses. So you don't hear about them in the Torah. But these are important days. We know that because the Messiah actually kept these feast days, too. And I believe these days are really important when it comes to the end times, um, um, eschatology, I believe these days are actually going to play a bigger role in some of the spiritual, maybe even the physical events that we are expecting here between the year 2020 and the year 2027 or the year 20, 2030. So we'll be doing classes on these um, this these days of uh, Purin, the days of Purin too. So you know, subscribe to our channel. You know, you know, we'll try to put out classes on those. You know, to give us some detail on what it is we're supposed to do to celebrate these days. But these are some important days too. But I only bring you over here to to see so you guys can see. You know that people can become Jews. I would take you over to um, Ezra and show you. Um, where it was talking about uh, people separating themselves from the uh, Gentiles. Flipping through my notes here. I should have had this more organized. Um, we'll kind of cover that in another class. But I'm talking about like over in Ezra chapter 10, 1st Ezra and chapter 9. You can see a lot of the events that took place um, as far as uh, separating um, 
the separating Israel, Israel separating themselves from the Gentiles. Um, so this is a lot about what this, these holidays, these whole, this holiday of Hanukkah has to do with is, you know, dedicating of the temple, separation of the, uh, the children of Israel from the Gentiles, those that don't know the Lord, and building these walls, these spiritual walls, to prevent them from coming in and retaking our temple. As you can see, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of detail, you know, around these 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 day of Hanukkah, this week long feast of Hanukkah. Um, that's why we're doing it, you know, kind of breaking it down into smaller parts. But like we said in this one, we're talking about what it is that we're supposed to be doing on Hanukkah during that week long feast. Well, we're now looking in the second book of Maccabees. Um, there's actually four books of Maccabees, but we're looking in the second book of Maccabees and we're in chapter one of it, looking at verse 18. Um, so we probably should add this to the reading list that we have so far. Um, it's chapter one of second book of Esdras. Verse 18 says, therefore, Whereas we are now purposed to keep the purification of the temple upon the fifth and twentieth day of the month Kazlu, we thought it necessary to certify you thereof that ye also might keep it as the feast of tabernacles and of the fire which was given us when Nehemiah offered sacrifice after that he had builded the temple and the altar now there's a lot going on in this verse first let me let me bring out this part about nehemiah um it says nehemiah but we recognize him as nehemiah and it's talking about this fire um if you guys know about this fire please drop it down in the comment section where verses are are is he talking about here apparently this is a big deal this fire that went over when it went, went down with nehemiah nehemiah's fire um, but I can't remember what he's talking about here. Um, but anyway, if you do know, educate me, help, help me out to teach me on what he's talking about this fire of Nehemiah. But anyway, the important thing as far as this class is concerned, notice how he says that ye might keep it as the feast of tabernacles. And that's what we saw back over there in, um, uh, chapter four of, uh, first Maccabees when it was talking about with gladness and with mirth, because that is actually what you do during the Feast of Tabernacles. It is a joyous occasion and you, you do a lot of singing. You do a lot of celebrating. It is the last feast of the year and you spend it as a very joyous occasion. Well, that's what it's telling us to do here is telling us that we are to keep Hanukkah like tabernacles as far as it being a joyous occasion now what you don't see mentioned here is anything about sleeping in booths or sleeping in tents that's the only thing that seems to be missing it's a week-long or eight-day festival just like tabernacles was it has joy just like tabernacles was it has mirth just like tabernacles we're even going to see how it talks about trees being and and the, the branches of bowls of trees being used in the celebration just like tabernacles but what's not mentioned is sleeping in booths now i'm not the one who tries to add or take away from the word you know if it don't say sleep in booths you know i probably won't be sleeping in a tent on Hanukkah uh, only because it didn't mention it here but you know I really don't see anything wrong with it if somebody decided they want to you know keep the feast of Hanukkah just like they kept the feast of tabernacles and they want to sleep in a tent or if somebody missed the feast of tabernacles and now you know they're going to want to tabernacle in a, in a booth or in a tent during Hanukkah I don't see anything wrong with that at all it's just that the Bible doesn't give us any direct direction to do it so you know I, I think it's kind of up to us whether we do. I don't I don't see that anybody would actually get in trouble for sleeping in a booth or not. But to keep the feast of uh, Hanukkah correctly, what it is talking about is mirth and gladness. So but let's come over in chapter 10. This is um, another chapter. This is the last chapter on our reading list uh, so far. Um, just to recap our reading list, we have John in chapter 10, uh, second Maccabees in chapter 10. We have um, first Maccabees in chapter one, first Maccabees in chapter four and second Maccabees in chapter one. Um, those are what are on our reading list. But anyway. Um, let's come over and look at uh, um, chapter 10, verse 5. 
It says, now upon the same day that the strangers profaned the temple and the very same day that it was cleansed again, even the five and 20th day of the same month, which is Kazlu. So this is this is real interesting um, that they're actually having this celebration on the same day that it was um, that it was desecrated. The same day that they did this horrible act, the abomination of desolation done by Antiochus Epiphanes. The very same day is the very same day that they're actually going to have this celebration. Verse six says, and they kept the eight days with gladness as in the Feast of Tabernacles, remembering that not long before they had held the Feast of Tabernacles when as they wandered in the mountain and dens like beasts. Yeah, this is talking about that, that, that story of, you know, what Antiochus Epiphanes did. And, you know, basically you had a certain number of people of Israel who refused to to um give up their their beliefs you know a lot of most of them did most of the people who called themselves Israel when they found themselves being threatened by you know Antiochus they they actually changed and said you know we're not really Israel at all there was really only a small group that actually stayed and fought you know during this time and, you know, so that's what it's talking about, how they kept the Feast of Tabernacles hidden in the mountains. They were hiding away. They wasn't in Jerusalem. They couldn't even come to Jerusalem anymore. When they kept the Feast of Tabernacles, they, you know, they were, you know, like it says there, they wandered in the mountains and dens like beasts. Um, you know, it's kind of like what's going on now. You know, a lot of Israelites are not even welcome over in Jerusalem. Now they're keeping the Feast of Tabernacles and these other feast days, even in their own communities. I know we, we was right here on the whole old hillbilly homestead when we kept the Feast of Tabernacles. Verse seven says, wherefore they bear branches and fair bows and palms also and sang psalms unto him that had given them good success in cleansing his place. So here it is how it is that we ought to celebrate this eight day long feast. And this is very similar to what we did during tabernacles, bare branches, uh, fair bows. I guess the branches are bare because we're in the winter time now and none of these trees are going to have any leaves on them at all. So it's just going to be bare branches this time. Whereas in tabernacles, they still had leaves on the branches uh, um, fair bows and palms also and they sang psalms sang songs sang psalms um, this is saying psalms so you know maybe it is that we'll you know pick us out some of the chapters from the book of psalms and we'll actually read these um, even sing them you know as we walk around with these branches during this eighth day long celebration again notice that the only thing missing here is the tent the, the booth is the only thing missing here. Um, but, you know, if, you know, you guys decide to come to the Hill of Billy Homestead, I'm sure it's like anybody anywhere else. You know, if a bunch of people decide to congregate in an area to, you know, to keep these feast days together. Well, you're definitely going to have some booths. You're definitely going to have some tents, you know, around. So I guess I guess it actually is included in all of that. When you think about it, um, eight says they ordained also a common statute or decree that every year those days should be kept of the whole nation of Jews. So this is why we still keep this um, feast day till today It's called a post exilic feast, meaning this is a feast that was created after the 70 years of exile, after the days of Daniel, after the days of Zerubbabel, you know, after the days of Ezra, when they, um, were forbidden to go into Jerusalem for those 70 years, you know, that started over there with Nebuchadnezzar. Um, these feast days, Purim and Hanukkah were the two feast days that were created afterwards. They were created afterwards. Um, some people will try to say that, you know, because they were post exilic feasts, they have no significance. Well, again, I'll point you over to John in chapter 10, where the Messiah was actually in Jerusalem. If he took the time to walk, Mind you, he had to walk eight hours from where he lived to Jerusalem just to walk around in Jerusalem during the Feast of Dedication. Well, to me, that makes it a big deal because, you know, I ain't walking eight hours for nothing that ain't important. If I'm about to walk eight hours for something, you best believe it's going to be important. And so for him to be in Jerusalem during the Feast of Dedication makes it important. You know, he didn't live in Jerusalem. You know, he, he lived in Nazareth. That was eight hour. That was an eight hour walk to get there. 
And then in verse 9, it says, and this was the end of Antiochus called Epiphanes. So again, guys, go over, read those books, you know, look for more classes that we'll be putting out on the subject. I believe this one, you know, solves the riddle of what it is that we're supposed to be doing during Hanukkah to round it all off. It is a joyous occasion that lasts for eight days where we are to sing psalms with branches of goodly trees. Um, maybe sleep in a tent, maybe not, depending on your situation. Um, but, you know, let's drop down in the comment section and let's um, try to polish this on off. Maybe there's some details that I missed or something like that. Maybe it's something that you know that I don't know. If you know about that Talmud and where those verses are, you know, put them down there in the comment section. You know, I'll go and take a look at those. You know, maybe it is that maybe we will be lighting eight day menorah, um, eight you know, lighting that candle for eight days. I don't particularly have a menorah and I won't be lighting anything for eight days unless, of course, you know, I'm proven, you know, it's proven by scripture that I'm supposed to be, then, you know, I definitely will be doing it, but we'll hammer that out in the comment section or in a future video. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you got something out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, go ahead and hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way. And shalom.